Japan, a nation that stands as a testament to harmony between tradition and innovation. Known for its technological prowess, gastronomical delights, and awe-inspiring landscapes, it has always been a beacon of safety, a place where crime rates are amongst the lowest in the world. But is it as safe as it appears? Or is there a darker side lurking beneath the surface? A side that is often overlooked, overshadowed by the tranquility of its tea ceremonies and the vibrancy of its anime culture. In the shadows of this seemingly safe nation, there lie unsolved mysteries that have perplexed the minds of investigators for years. Cases that remain shrouded in silence, as if they never happened. Tonight we delve into these hidden corners of Japan, shedding light on stories that have remained untold. Welcome to a journey into the unexplored, the forgotten, the unsolved. On May 5th, 1996, the last day of the Golden Week holiday season in Japan, two schoolgirls from Himi City, located in Toyama Prefecture, decided to take part in a test of courage at a Shinrei spot. The term Shinrei spots often refers to supposedly haunted or cursed locations involving paranormal activity. Megumi Yashiki and Narumi Takumi, both 19 years old at the time, planned to travel to a notorious haunted spot in Uozu City, which is located roughly 35 miles or 55 kilometers east of Himi City. Several days prior to their trip, Megumi and Narumi spoke to friends at a local park, who claimed to have recently traveled to the same spot to partake in this test of courage. It's alleged that the girls had already visited the location twice before, although other reports suggest that they may have learned about the spot from a magazine article. After finishing a shift at her local store, Narumi purchased a pen light, as well as some batteries for Megumi's flashlight, in preparation for their evening trip to the haunted location. At approximately 9 p.m., both girls got into Megumi's car, a black Subaru Vivio, and began making their way to Uozu. Since it was the mid-90s, and mobile phones weren't commonplace in society at this point, they sent a message to their families using a pager to explain that they were going to Uozu. Midway along their journey, at around 9.30 p.m., they stopped off at Kayomaru Park in Imizu City for around 30 minutes to tell some friends what their plans were before continuing along the trip. At around 10 p.m., the girls were spotted refueling the car at a petrol station before they left to continue. Megumi's car was then seen around 10 p.m. driving towards Uozu on Route 8. At around 11 p.m. on May 5th, one of the friends of Megumi and Narumi received a pager message from the girls saying, We are in Uozu, suggesting that they had made it to their destination. Little did anyone know at the time, but these four words would mark the last time anyone would ever hear from the two girls from Himi City, as Megumi and Narumi, as well as their car, vanished into thin air. But where had the girls gone to? Located about 60 kilometers east of Himi City lies the Tsubono Spa Hotel, a six-floor structure where you could go to escape the busy city life and relax whilst overlooking the horizon of the Toyama Prefecture. Unfortunately, in the early 1980s, the manager of the hotel disappeared after filing for bankruptcy. Then, during the asset-inflated bubble economy, the property and buildings were sold at auction for 35 million yen. However, the cost of tearing down the building at the time was deemed too expensive, and therefore the city council decided against removing it and barricaded it up as best as possible. This led to the location becoming a hotspot for young adults and biker gangs, known as Bosozoku in Japan, who would use the hotel as a place where they could express havoc, vandalizing the building smashing windows and setting off fireworks inside. Despite plans to restore the property after a series of failed projects, the hotel stands isolated to this day, bruised and beaten, overlooking the city below. As years passed by, the lonely Tsubono became a popular haunted hotel for people to test their courage and visit during the long summer nights. Speculating that the girls may have decided to run away for personal reasons, the police stopped searching and the families waited for a month with no further developments on their whereabouts. The Toyama Prefectural Police decided to conduct two large-scale searches for the missing girls in June and October, beginning in Himi City and ending at the Tsubono Spa Hotel. After covering several different routes between the two locations, 
police were unable to find any trace of the two. With nobody else coming forward with any sightings of the girls, it quickly became a national mystery. For years, police had no clues. However, this all changed at the end of 2014, when police learned about the existence of three witnesses. After further investigation, police located the three witnesses and interviewed them January. A car with two women dropped from a parking lot into the sea near Kayomaru Park at midnight of a major holiday in 1996, one of the witnesses said. At midday on Wednesday, the 4th of March, 2020, Toyama Prefectural Police used a crane to pull a black Subaru Vivio wrapped in blue sheets from the seabed at Fushiki Port in Mizu City, located close to Kayomaru Park, where the girls had previously stopped during their journey. Inside the vehicle were the skeletal remains of both Narumi Takumi and Megumi Yashiki, which was confirmed through DNA analysis. A petrol station credit card with the name Yashiki Megumi embossed on it was also found in the car. Due to the length of time the two girls were exposed to the elements, the bodies had decomposed, meaning that forensics couldn't determine whether or not drowning was the cause of death, or if they had possibly died from other causes. At the end of 2014, when three people came forward to the Toyama Prefectural Police and claimed that they witnessed a car matching the description of Megumi's fall into the port on the night that they went missing, police initially dismissed the claims but decided to re-interview them again in January 2020. The three anonymous witnesses told how, at 12.30 a.m. on the night of the disappearance, they saw a black Subaru car with two female occupants inside parked along the edge of the cliffside at Kayomaru Park, with the car's rear facing the water. As they approached the car from the front to speak with the girls, the car suddenly started reversing and fell into the water. When asked why they never came forward before, all three witnesses said the reason for not doing so was because they were scared, possibly of being accused of being responsible for what happened. Police later determined that the deaths of the two girls was an accident. The identities of these witnesses remains unknown, and further speculation on whether or not foul play was involved, and if their stories are 100% true still circulate to this day. What's certain, though, is that these witnesses definitely saw the last moments of Megumi and Narumi, and to not come forward with that information for over 18 years definitely opens up more questions. What's even more unusual, however, is the fact that the police sat on this information for a further six years themselves before they acted upon it, knowingly leaving the bodies of the two girls submerged underwater for over half a decade. A representative from the juvenile division of the Toyama Prefectural Police told reporters, the alleged witnesses were interviewed multiple times we know that the car fell into the sea for some reason, but at this time, foul play is not suspected. When asked if they would pursue a solution to the case, the chief of police himself told a magazine that, we will investigate as needed in the future, leaving hope for answers bleak. Megumi's father himself appeared to have lost faith in the investigation, claiming, I don't trust the witnesses at all. I don't know who they are. I have asked the police, but they won't tell me. So why did the police fail to act on this information? Why did the witnesses only come forward after 18 years? And how did the girls really end up meeting their fate? Whilst there may not be a definitive answer to all of these questions, there are definitely some strong theories. With the suggestions from police reports that there was no evidence of Megumi and Narumi ever being at Subono Hotel, it's possible that they decided to turn back not long after leaving the petrol station around 10 p.m. when their car was last spotted, perhaps deciding against visiting the spot entirely and driving back to a familiar area where they felt safe. It's also possible that, with the girls parked dangerously close to the edge of the port, they accidentally put their car into reverse gear after being spooked by the three witnesses approaching them, and by the time the accelerator was pushed, it was too late to correct their mistake. Maybe the three witnesses wanted to scare the girls as a prank, but when they realized it had backfired, they felt responsible and guilty for their actions and all decided never to speak of it again until their conscience gave in and they finally came forward. Another theory comes from the popular image board called 2chan, where a famous post in 2001 claims to get to the bottom of the matter. 
It's a famous post among unsolved case enthusiasts and has been copied and pasted many times due to its realistic nature. However, the authenticity of the content is unknown at this time. To summarize, the story is that a man and his friend met Megumi and Narumi and thought they were going to Tsubono Spa Hotel together. Instead, the men headed to a different location and violently assaulted the two girls with a group consisting of five people, including three friends they had called beforehand. The Post claimed that one of the bodies is dumped under a manhole and the car is said to have been left behind. However, many have said it's a hoax due to the car being found at the bottom of the seabed instead, while others claiming it's a mixture of lies. Some people also wonder if the three men who gave eyewitness testimony in 2014 are part of these five men. Of these five men, one has committed suicide and one is currently missing. What happened to the remaining three is currently unknown. The rumor also says that the three came forward to the police themselves. Whether or not they did, it is factual that police waited around six years to act after receiving the information. When contacted for comment by Shukan Jose, a representative from a juvenile division of the Toyama Prefectural Police said, The alleged witnesses were interviewed multiple times. We know that the car fell into the sea for some reason, but at this time foul play is not suspected. Yashiki's father has grown weary of the police. I don't trust the witnesses at all, he said. I don't know who they are. I have asked the police, but they won't tell me. He wants the investigation to continue. Even so, the police cannot do anything without evidence, he said. Prospects for a resolution do not seem promising. We will investigate as needed in the future, the chief of the Toyama Prefectural Police told the magazine. As our journey through this deeply affecting case comes to a close, we find ourselves standing at the edge of a precipice filled with questions, uncertainties, and an unsolved mystery that continues to haunt the community. The disappearance of the two young girls, a tragic event that has left an indelible scar on the hearts of their families and the town, remains an enigma and a poignant reminder of the fragility of life. This case serves as a stark reminder of the importance of cherishing our loved ones and of prioritizing safety in our daily lives. It is a story that demands justice, a story that seeks to prevent similar tragedies from unfolding in the future. The sun may set on our documentary, but the quest for answers and the hope for justice continues to burn brightly. As we wrap up this chapter, let's not forget the purpose of our journey. We tell these stories not to revel in the mystery, but to shed light on injustice, to keep alive the memory of the victims, and to remind ourselves that every story deserves an ending, every question an answer. Thank you for watching my first YouTube video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more unsolved or mysterious cases about Japan. I will see you on our next adventure.